Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and uh, we're going to talk about two phenomena of propagation. Um, not necessarily well known, and a lot of people don't actually realize that these exist. And this explains why, in one part, I was able to receive an FM uh, station from the, the FM band um, thousands of miles away. Uh, when most people think, well, it's isn't it line of sight? Uh, and so this is going to talk about the propagation of signals in the VHF range and UHF range uh, that can be affected by two different phenomena. Well, one is mostly VHF, lower VHF. The other one is capable of even UHF. So what are they exactly? So uh, first of all, one of the uh, things that uh, we talked about is uh, this I'm going to share later. Uh, I showed you the DX map page, which actually will bring you to sporadic e skip info of what's happening in 50 megahertz or the FM DX band, stuff like that. And uh, there's, of course, um, another type of uh, propagation that could happen. Um, that is tropo and here you have tropo info also uh, on this page actually in many many ways so sportic e-skip and somebody talked to me about yeah but what about uh, tropo ducting this was the tropo ducting map from the DX info center website so some people think it's the same it is not um, what I was listening to on the FM band in the 90 megahertz range, what was also happening in the 50 megahertz range, 6 meter band, was sporadic e skip. Sporadic e skip is intense layers of ionization, and they are created, um, we think, over e very powerful storms, thunderstorms, uh, weather fronts, and um, they actually have such intense ionization, they're capable of actually um, having signals in uh, up to 100 megahertz and more bounce off just like shortwave radio signals. These last anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. I've seen sometimes um, a few days. It depends on the weather patterns. It depends on a lot of things. Uh, the best time of the year for this to happen is usually summer. June, July is known for the Northern Hemisphere to be the best. Uh, and December, January for the, the Southern Hemisphere. And of course, uh, this is a phenomenon that can happen at any time. It could be at 2 in the morning. It doesn't respect the rules that you know higher frequencies are only daytime. It, there's no rule with sport key skip at any time. And even if we tell you that, you know, June, July, for example, are the best, um, check every day. You never know. At the middle of anywhere, any season, it could happen. So this is really a propagation that looks like shortwave propagation, bouncing off um, the ionosphere or a cloud of very uh, ionized, very high ionized particles. Uh, and that could actually... The, the, the more it is dense and big, the higher the frequencies it will propagate. So sometimes it stops at 11 meters, 10 meters. So CB band will be uh, active, 10 meters will be active, but not six. Uh, if it's more ionized, it then goes, can go up to you know 50 megahertz, six meter band. Very, very powerful ionization, then it goes to the FM band and even above 100 megahertz. Uh, that also means scanner radio buffs should, when the 6-meter band is open, scan 30 to 50 megahertz, for example. They'll be surprised to hear transmissions from pretty far away that might pop up under scanner radios. I've had that happen several times over the years. The difference with tropoducting, that is another way of propagation that does give certain distances, is that tropoducting has to do with layers of our atmosphere, uh, particularly um, if you have a layer of cold air, cool air, and warm air that are 
just one above each other. Uh, and this happens very often when a cold front goes through or a, war a warm front goes through because the air doesn't mix. The hair just either slides under, so cold air could slide under the hot air, or you know the hot air just pushes uh, through. And that layer, that small layer where the two masses actually meet up, can trap VHF signals. So what happens is your VHF signal, which is line of sight usually, will actually be trapped in a layer of cool and warm air together. And because of that, it actually will follow partly the curvature of the Earth, which means that um, you could hear hundreds of miles away uh, UHF or VHF signals that are not audible usually. Uh, I remember one opening one time that uh, there was a repeater, a net on a repeater on two meters, and stations from five, six, seven hundred kilometers away were actually uh, saying hello to everybody on the net, uh, and uh, they were clear like they were local stations. Um, the difference also in the two types of propagation is that tropal ducting is usually very stable. So if it lasts for, say, two hours, well, for two hours, your signals are going to be there. They're going to be like local signals. There isn't really any fading or anything. It just follows that, you know, uh, that path of the layers of air. Where sporic E is a little bit like shortwave propagation, like the ionosphere. It varies all the time. So signals can move up, move down, fade out. Uh, and so on as the structure of that cloud actually changes all the time. So these are the two types of propagation that are different, but that can offer uh, the long distance propagation on VHF, UHF. Uh, e, sporadic E skip, especially if there are multiple clouds spaced at a good distance, can open up uh, huge distances. You can go up to, you know, like I've had E skip openings that made me have contacts on six meters up to Chile and Brazil from Montreal. So it gives you an idea. Could happen with Europe also. Um, where tropodecting is shorter, usually less than a thousand kilometers, often just a few hundred kilometers. Um, so you're not going to do the same very, very long distance. There are exceptions to the rule. Um, tropodecting over oceans and big masses of water can actually be very, very long. Uh, an example of that is in Europe, for example, um, when tropo ducting happens over the Mediterranean, for example, a lot of stations can contact each other from different countries easily, you know, up to a, a thousand miles away uh, because, you know, water is colder and it creates that... Um, warm layer at the top, cold air at the bottom, and it traps the VHF signals. And because the body of water is very big, well, it also will um, have a longer path. Um, I will share with you, because I took these pictures off of VK3FS website, so I want to share that website with you guys. Uh, it is here. Uh, if you go into this web page and you'll see pages, you can go and read more about propagation here. Uh, so they're going to talk. In the, there's a one page about making sense of solar indices. The other one, radio propagation. One expl explains a little more sporadic E propagation, tropospheric propagation, and so on. So you can go and check it out here. Uh, I will share this page with you guys in the description below. And I will also, uh, also share the page of uh, DX Maps for the sporadic e-skip openings and the uh, tropodecting maps uh, from DX Info Center. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.